Welcome back. The goal of this video is to give just enough digital logic background to understand the rest of the book. We'll look at logic gates, combinational logic, the ALU, clocking, and memory. We're discussing digital logic. Digital logic deals with binary values 0 and 1. For binary data, there's a voltage level beyond which we call a signal 1 and below which we'll call the signal 0. Timing ensures that we don't ask during the intermediate state. We're familiar with AND, OR, and NOT from a software point of view, but logic gates implement the functionality in digital circuits. Here are the symbols and truth tables for AND, OR, and NOT. Here are the symbols and truth tables for exclusive OR, NAND, and NOR. NAND is AND followed by NOT, and NOR is OR followed by NOT. NAND and NOR turn out to be useful because they're cheap to produce. Logic designs for AND, OR, and other gates can be converted into NANDs and NORs for implementation. There are two types of digital logic. In combinational logic, the output depends solely on the current inputs. It has no memory or state. In sequential logic, outputs depend on inputs and the internal state. These devices retain state or memory. We can express ideas in many ways, truth tables, Boolean expressions, and circuit design. Combinational logic devices don't hold state. They always compute the same output given the same input. Combinational logic can be completely specified by truth tables that designate outputs for every possible combination of inputs. If a logic block has n inputs, then there are 2 to the n entries in the truth table. And there are often many ways to implement the same logic. On the left, we see a half adder using exclusive OR and AND. On the right, using AND, OR, and inverters. We can conceal the implementation details with a block diagram. Decoders take multiple inputs and map these to outputs. Looking at our truth table, we have three inputs and eight possible outputs. The block diagram on the right shows this as well. Looking back at the truth table, you see that for every possible combination of the three inputs, one and only one output is one. At the bottom, we see simple AND gates and inverters used for decoding addresses. Encoders do the opposite of the decoders. An encoder takes two to the n inputs and produces n binary outputs. A multiplexer is like a switch. This multiplexer has two inputs, A and B. It's only going to allow one to go through to the output Z. The signal, SE, is a single bit which determines which signal A or B goes through. Here we see one way a multiplexer could be implemented. We have two selectors, the lowercase a and b, and these two selectors can select two to the two or four outputs. Based on these selectors, one and only one of inputs a, b, c, d is allowed to go to the q output. Here's a 32-bit two to one multiplexer. Both of the inputs coming in are 32 bits and the output is 32 bits. We need a single bit selector to select A or B. This 32-bit multiplexer could be implemented with 32 1-bit multiplexers. A bus is a line or set of lines over which data travels. In diagrams, the bus is often shown by a single line. A thicker line means a multi-line bus and sometimes, as we see here, a slash and the size of the bus will be given. For example, a 32-bit bus for data or addresses. Instead of physically connecting individual gates, an alternative is PLA, Programmable Logic Array. FPLA can be programmed by the user. There are two popular hardware description languages, Verilog and VHDL. This example shows a half adder in circuits 
and in the Verilog code, Verilog is a C-style programming language that is used to design and implement logic circuitry. An appendix in our book has more details about Verilog. Here's a more complex Verilog example. The ALU, the arithmetic logic unit, is the brain of the CPU. It does the operations of the CPU, as we'll get to know soon. All of the previous circuits we looked at were combinational. The output depends only on the inputs. Next we look at sequential circuits that have memory. For these circuits, the output depends on both the inputs and the prior state. Sequential circuits work on a clock edge, either the rising or the falling edge. Circuits, both sequential and combinational, are built from transistors. Memory is also constructed from transistors. That's why Moore's Law is so important. It's allowed us to fit more and more things inside the CPU, making it increasingly powerful. An Intel processor from 1971 had 2300 transistors. Modern Intel processors may have billions. Most of the transistors inside the CPU are used for memory. Abstractly, we can think of a transistor as just a switch that either lets current go through or blocks it. When we get to Chapter 5, we'll look at different types of memory like DRAM and SRAM and see how they're constructed. Here's a diagram of a simple flip-flop that can store one bit of information. It takes about eight transistors to construct this, and it will only change on the clock cycle. Earlier I mentioned that logic can be expressed in truth tables, Boolean algebra, and circuits. There's one more way, and that's a state diagram. In this first state diagram, we see two states of off and on and how it transitions from one state to the other. The bottom state diagram shows a two-way, three-bit adder. We won't use many state diagrams in this course. We will see one later in Chapter 4, so I just wanted to refresh your memory now about them. In the next video, we start looking at a diagram of a MIPS CPU. Mm -hmm.